Hi, I'm Henry Camp. This is the first of four short videos that explain how to build a decisive competitive edge, or DCE, which allows a company to grow its business at will. Here's a summary of the whole process. What it does is converts an existing customer or prospect into a loyal client that will give you all the business they can. Be careful, you'll be able to grow your business out of cash. So make sure the brakes work and don't forget to test them. This video covers step one. The next will cover steps two and three. And steps four and five each have their own video. You'll see these figures throughout the presentation. They sort of show us where we are. The figure with the head in his hands refers to the customer's problems. The people at odds refer to the conflicts that cause the problems. The pair shaking hands, the resolution of the conflict. The celebrating customer is enjoying the expectation of the future benefits. And the book represents the story, which captures the imaginations of the customers. And finally, the finish line is the implementation itself, which ushers in the celebrated future state. Let's get going. We're going to start with the problems of a manufacturer in a specific example uh, so that you can get it in way of sort of a parable. A team of people that have been around for a while will know the customer's environments well enough in any particular uh, situation. Uh, and they'll be able to generate a short list of problems. Better still, you can invite friendly customers to explain the situation for themselves. Here are the big problems our team came up with. You won't need to go beyond the, the number that you can count on both hands. We have seven here. Let's start to connect the elements based on our understanding of cause and effect. So where to start? Well, it seems clear that missed sales results in less profits, right? And it turns out that most of our problems have an impact on profits. Maybe buying as a hassle connects up too, but it isn't so clear how. So we'll only make obvious connections. Now, too much cash tied up isn't tied in. It's certainly bad, but other than carrying costs, but we already have that, it doesn't affect profits. So where does it lead? Ah, there it is. Worse cash flow. Less profits contributes to that too. And we live and die based on our reputation, so diminished goodwill also hurts our ability to generate profits as the word leaks out. Let's switch to discovering why the problems exist in the first place. We've gone up first, now we want to go down to the necessary conditions for these problems. Here's one, and it causes not one, but two of our problems. Expediting delivery due to a threatened shortage drains purchasing time, leaving less to spend on improvements, and it's certainly a hassle. Problems often have multiple causes, each contributing to the intensity of an observed effect. Look at this one. Salespeople use up purchasing time, too, and are often seen as a hassle. Let's do a thought experiment to check on this logic. Here are two assumptions. One, Salespeople earn a commission of 30% of the gross profit as an incentive to sell more. Two, on average, gross profit margin is 20%. So because of A and B, salespeople earn 6% of sales, 20% of 30%. Now, let's say we go to each customer with two options. First, leave everything as it is, or... All prices are discounted henceforth 5% across the boards and they never see another salesperson. What percentage would elect to retain their salesperson? Option two helps the customer and adds 1% to the company's bottom line. If we stick with option one, which is the status quo for most distributors, we're unilaterally charging most customers for something they'd rather not pay for. Ouch. And everybody does it. Other times, multiple causes are necessary to, to create an effect. In other words, one is insufficient on its own to result in the effect. 
when purchasing is scrambling to find a raw material, it only causes a production stoppage when the product can't be found in time. So the little banana shaped um, connector is an AND connector. And even if purchasing doesn't scramble at all, when the raw material can't be found, it still leads to a production stoppage. Here's another pair that have to both exist to cause purchasing to scramble. Purchasing doesn't scramble if they don't know inventory is low, and they don't scramble if they get timely notice. So it's only both together that causes purchasing to scramble. Here's some more for you. I'll let you look over that yourself. People adore demand forecasts, even though chaos theory informs us that accurate forecasts are impossible. As I like to say, my wife will buy something today, but when she woke up, even she didn't know what. So how can you forecast that? Demand is unpredictable sounds like a natural fact of life. Lean has the principle of the five whys. It relies on the belief in inherent simplicity of nature, that if you ask why five times, you'll get down to the root causes. The quote here is a paraphrasing of Aristotle in Latin. Here's a third factor contributing to purchasing difficulty to find improvements in, in our area. Now, watch this next connection. Ah, these are important. They suggest that the causes are becoming interrelated. Initially, the causes multiply. It may seem like they're continuing to proliferate forever. But interconnections are a sign that the causes are consolidated. The fact that different silos act on their own priorities is a contributor to three different problems now. and we find reasons for some more problems. Dead inventory accumulates because notice of obsolescence can be late and it is past the time frame when the product can be returned. All normal stuff, but it conspires to steal the customer's performance. Wow, different areas of the company working together poorly is now a contributor to five out of the seven problems. And that would be great to banish formerly, huh? But how will we do that? Because they do work for their own benefits and don't often know what's happening in other areas. Sounds like a tough one. Often asking a question like this helps us find what we've left out. To fill in the middle is the fact that purchasing has more important fish to fry than packaging. So they fry those more important fish, make it difficult again for purchasing to improve packaging. Here are some more that you can check on your own. I won't go over every connection, but I do stop at every change. So you can watch this video and pause it to think through the connections if you're interested. So indeed, what does block us from ditching the excess inventory? Why is it persistently there? Ah, they don't want to pay a restocking charge. Of course, time will use up the asset excess eventually. Now, here are three causes to the high inventory situation, and each of them have their own causes. Please notice that supplier unreliability is a new one, resulting in higher safety stocks, while old friends demand is unpredictable and inventory is inaccurate, and suppliers have lead times, are also contributing factors, which result in customers increasing their minimum inventory levels. Each of the four makes safeties higher on its own. And together, they really make them higher. That's why inventories are so high. Please note demand unpredictability now contributes to all seven problems. Getting rid of that one thing would make everything better. But as we discussed, demand unpredictability is probably a fact of life. So how do people react to problems? For example, stockouts stop production. So if we look up here on the uh, top right, where we have stop stockouts stopping production, and we wonder, what do people do who have production stoppages? Really, there's nothing worse for a manufacturer. They'll do anything to avoid them. And the obvious answer is they choose between evils. More inventory is less bad 
than stopping production. Now this is very important. This is a negative feedback loop, more often called a vicious cycle or a catch-22. These are particularly bad because once everything rolls through the first time, causing the customer's problems, then one of the problems results in looping back and making the other problem even bigger, which loops back through up to things like too much cash tied up in inventory and losses on inventory disposals. Those things are getting even worse. So do you think there are more of these vicious cycles? Certainly there are. Because they order more than they want to, it increases the delay before ordering, increasing the chance of stocking out, which in turn exerts more pressure on raising inventory. Every cyclic loop viciously makes the customer situation worse and worse. Here I've numbered the entities without any causes. What I'm trying to do is find some insight that allows us to bring this to a conclusion. And there are two possibilities for each one of these numbered items. One, their root causes, just facts of life, or two, we just haven't articulated their causes yet. So let's see if we can find some sort of connection. What can we come up with? We believe that there should be fewer connections. Look, nine of the 14 are policies of the supplier, which exist to protect the suppliers, not customers. The fact that suppliers' policies hurt customers is what we call an actionable root cause. Just what we've been looking for. And it's always a relief to find because about this time, people are all feeling like this logic crap might go on forever. So to keep the current reality tree from getting too messy, all three yellow causes represent suppliers' policies and I've marked them all with an A. The remaining ones are just facts of life. Read them yourself. And number seven. The way we reduce the negative consequence of 11 is to replenish more frequently, use actual demand to pull product through and negotiate for faster replenishment time. Last number 12. Fixing this and the last one might be another decisive competitive edge for another time, but let's go on. What did shippers supply do? We question our policies. Now this is the end of part one. If you're interested in how this root cause turns into a core conflict and what to do about it, tune into the next video and hear about parts two and three. Thanks.